Maybe there's more to this place than meets the eye. First time I've had to look for Quisley in such a rustic location. Not his usual style. How did Quisley stand it down here? It's not what I'd call luxurious. roofs. It looks like there's a Keep your voice down. Those lunatics Look, will hear you. they have you. captives. We mean you no harm. We're looking for someone. Over here. Let me out before these cultists kill me. I would not Let me out here. too. There's Please a cult of Sithis in these caves. Life. They sacrifice. Thank you. We've been here for days. You should get out of here too, stranger. These people, the Unmakers, they're crazy. I think they're preparing to sacrifice people. Why would anyone want to do such a thing? I've met no one by that name, but that doesn't mean he isn't here somewhere. The only non-cultist I've seen in days was a dark elf who sneaked by a short time ago. She motioned for us to wait and left without a word. I... I should go. They're cultists, I think. They follow someone called the Daughter of Sithis, and they talk about sacrifices to the Unmaker. I was on the road to Gideon when they grabbed me. Can I go now? Before we continue, let's talk a moment. Cultists? That explains some of the decoration in here. So much for the smuggler hypothesis. I didn't expect to have to fight through a nest of cultists to extract Quisley from this mess, but so be it. What's he gotten himself mixed up in now? What's there to know? They worship a god of death, darkness, and primordial chaos. Nothing good can come of that. Quisley's always getting into trouble, but it usually involves love or dice. He could be in real danger this time. Allowing Quisley to be dragged off to angry criminals is not much of an improvement. While Quisley might deserve it, I can't let Tanari Vels get him either. I want to try to grab one of these cultists and get some answers. It's a long story. Suffice it to say, I owe his family a great debt. Quisley and I were more or less raised together. The Silvels count on me to watch out for him, or help him if he needs it.
That's what the Silvels say when they need me to help him. But he's their son. I'm just someone they raised. Forgive me if I sound ungrateful. They took me in and made sure I was clothed, educated, trained. They didn't have to do that. I've lost count. He does as he pleases. Unfortunately, what pleases him seems to land him in hot water. Every time. This, though... How Quisley stumbled into a cult's clutches, I can only guess. I'm the son of Lord Martel Halex, the traitor. I suppose the story's not well known outside of court circles. My father was one of High King Emmerich's most trusted advisors. But when I was only a toddler, he plotted to secretly murder Emmerich and appoint himself regent. Or so I'm told. He failed, of course. Others in my family were implicated in the plot. The High King stripped House Halix of its titles and domains. My mother died of shame. I was far too young to have been a part of it, though, so the Silvels took me in. Quisley really got himself into it this time. Idiot! Let's corner one of these cultists. They might know what's happened to Quisley. I'm not really with them. Don't hurt me! You there! Stop! Better not lay a finger on me. You have no idea who you're dealing with. Senathar, give me patience. What is the meaning of this intrusion? Who are you people? What do you think you're doing here? I warn you. I am favored by the daughter of Sithis. She will avenge every injury you inflict on me. Quisley Silvel? He belongs to Laleus now. She is the daughter of Sithis. And none dare defy her. Leave while you can. You're fools if you think you can save him from her. No! No! Quisley is Laleus's consort. You'll find them in the Bane of Scorn. I think the way there is back the way you came. Or, or maybe ahead? He's safe for now, though. They've got someone else to sacrifice today. Please, don't hurt me. They caught a dark elf sneaking around. Even now, she faces the death of the crystal fangs in the ritual room just ahead. But Laleus isn't there. She and her brother are in the Fane below. Your Quisley is with them, I think. We follow Sithis, Serpent of Chaos, Unmaker. Bringer of endings. The daughter of Sithis claims this place has been sacred to the Unmaker for years uncounted. Only when all has been consumed in the jaws of the void can the world be reborn. War tears the Empire apart. Daedric sorcery scourges the land. Chaos reigns. In times such as these, what power is greater than chaos? It seemed pretty exciting and different. Now I'm not so sure. I didn't really expect all the killing. I don't believe him. I think he knows more than he says he does. The daughter of Sithis? The Fane of Scorn? I don't believe it. Quisley's fallen in with... with... Death worshippers? Hardly. The only thing that interests Quisley is himself. Either these Sithis followers hid their true nature to lure him in, or he's so besotted with a woman that he doesn't realize he's in danger. Either way, 
I'd better get him out of here. I'm not sure I believe this sniveling cultist, but we shouldn't let anyone get sacrificed. Not even Tanare Vels. Let's split up. You keep going, in case he's telling the truth. I'll see if I can find out more about the daughter and the Fane. Please, I'll tell you anything you want. Just let me go. I know where a map of this place is. It's not far. Just, you know, don't hit me. Helpful of you. What else can you tell me? Vec. Thank you, stranger. Let's talk somewhere safer. Those e Ugh, my skin still feels like I've got a thousand tiny spiders biting me. That was horrible. Oh, and thank you. I don't know what someone like you was doing here, but I won't argue with Providence. Ah, the dutiful and not terribly clever mage. I'll bet he's angry with me. I took care not to inflict any permanent damage on him. And I fully intended to set him free just as soon as I finish here. It's business, not personal. Then you understand my predicament. I need Silvel if I want Lars Tull off my back. But it's not worth getting myself killed over. Help me get out of here and I'll help you. I got a look at a map, so I think I know where you can find Silvel. Not much? Lars Tull suspected that Quisley was hiding out in a smuggler's cave on the coast. I thought I'd have to check them all. Then I ran into your friend, Bastion. I knew there was something off about the smuggler story, though. It didn't fit. He must be in deep, if Lars Tull is willing to write off what I owe to get his claws on Quisley. Too bad for him, but it's a chance for me to get out of a bad situation. Lars Tull makes a good living from other people's mistakes, or desperation. I borrowed gold against imagined winnings like every gambler ever. You ask a lot of questions. Not to be rude, but I'd really rather find Quisley and get out of here. These cultists already tried to sacrifice me once, after all. I found notes left behind by some unfortunate scholar. He'd apparently come here to make a survey of the ruins. I hope he had the good sense to retreat when he found fresh evidence of occult presence. More likely, he came to a bad end. I did. It's all the way down at the end of this maze, naturally. The scholar's notes hinted that it's an abandoned temple. Once dedicated to Sithis. Well, probably not abandoned now. Good. I saw a rough map of this place before I got caught. So I think I know where to go. I'll keep out of your way if we run into more cultists. After that ritual, I'm in no condition for a fight. The cultists definitely go on and on about Sithis. But now I'm going to.
dead end and a vampire in a cage. This isn't terribly helpful. There's got to be a way through. I know what I saw on the map. Maybe the map showed a passage that isn't here? I would have sworn the map I saw showed a passage here. Unless... Could it be a hidden passage? I'll look around a bit. Why don't you see if the vampire knows anything? If he's been here long enough, he must have seen cultists coming or going through any hidden passages. But be careful with him. I don't trust vampires. Perhaps. But I'd rather not fight my way through half the cult to get to Quisley Silvel. If there's a passage here, it could save us quite a lot of trouble. Get in, get what you need, then get out. That's how I prefer to do things. Your comrade is correct. There's a hidden door. You're not part of this cult, are you? In fact, you appear to be lost. Your dark elf friend watches me with no small amount of suspicion. Perfectly understandable, but I'm not a slave to my hunger. Why are you wandering around Deep Scorn Hollow anyway? The daughter of Sithis is fond of sacrificing strangers. I have heard the name. The daughter of Sithis herself has him. These miserable Sithis... pretenders. I can show you the passage you seek. I'll consider it payback for the way they locked me up. They hid the switch for a secret door under that crate over there by the wall. Clever, if one is a child. I cannot believe I thought these weak-minded fools might have a genuine insight into the dark mysteries of Sithis. Lalace is a noble from Leowen who made a game of dabbling in dark lore. As I understand it, she found this place and managed to wake a presence that had been sleeping here for ages. She surrendered to the darkness eagerly. I doubt that it cared. Fools and dilettantes bewitched by the daughter's powers. They believe she is the living embodiment of Sithis' dark will, servant of an ancient power. But the only power she serves is her own avarice and lust, like any greedy mortal. Huh. Surprisingly helpful. Wait, would you do me a favor in return? Perhaps before you rush off, you might unlock this cell? A favor in return for my showing you the switch? Let me again assure you, I am in control of my urges. I shall not harm you. I came here hoping the temple held answers about my condition. But the cultists discovered me as I fed upon an unwary noble from Gideon. The daughter of Sithis was intrigued, but when she realized I had not yet mastered my powers, she locked me away. Yes, that would be an elegant solution to my predicament. I'm afraid that I'm rather new to this uh, state of being. I haven't figured out that trick yet. I'm still capable of gratitude, stranger. I just want to be free of this place. I came here expecting something quite different. Perhaps before you rush off, you might unlock this cell?
never grow tired of being Perhaps correct. The friend you seek might still be alive. Perhaps before you rush off, you might unlock this cell? A favor in return for my showing you the switch? Let me again assure you. This should take us right to the cult's hidden temple. Come on! Hold up a moment before we go on. I've been thinking. I stumbled headlong into a bad situation once already. I do try to learn from my mistakes. I've been thinking. There's a good chance we won't find Quisley Silvell alive. Nothing good. I wouldn't go so far as to say that it comes down to bringing Quisley in or taking his place. But it's close. I really need to be free of Lars Tull. I barely persuaded him to give me this chance. I won't get another one. This may sound ghoulish, but... If Quisley is dead, I'd like his signet ring. It's big, gold, and set with rubies. If I bring it back to Lars Tull, it will show that I held up my end of our bargain, and he would take it in payment of my debt. Someone's coming! Oh, there you are. I'm afraid I wasted my time on that cultist. He knew nothing. Glad I caught up to you. Oh, I see you found that... Uh, that... Tenare. Watch your back, friend. You put the fear of the gods into our captive cultist. He was sobbing on the floor when I gave up and left. I did meet a surprisingly talkative vampire, though. He told me which way you went. And seriously, do not turn your back on Tanare. Our weepy friend told me that Quisley's quite taken with this daughter of Sithis. Figures. My guess is he told her his family is wealthy, so she's keeping him alive for ransom. We'll probably find them in the shrine they call the Fane of Scorn. She seems like the sort who expects the worst. I remain optimistic. I don't always get along with Quisley, but I don't want him to end up sacrificed by the cult. Or turned into some crime boss's object lesson, for that matter. Not at the cost of his life. I'll figure out something. I always do. But, just in case, warn Tanari that she'd better not try anything foolish when we get Quisley. She caught me off guard once. It won't happen again. You're not even going to apologize, are you? I'm sorry? Just keep your distance from Quisley. He's my responsibility. I'm no use That's in a fight right now. I'll keep back. Here. Go away. Arise, my brother. 
Kill these trespassers. I'll just... Oh dear. I'll get out of the way. Runs off again, the little bastard. How dare you? Lelise would never have hurt me. She said so. <laughs> she murders people, you you idiot. You were probably next. I'm not talking to you, Bastion. Nor to that rude, dark elf that just laughed at me. You spoiled everything! You and that lumbering oaf my father insists on sending to make my life miserable. And whoever that dark elf is, barging in and ruining my life. Who do you people think you are? Well, that's... that's just your opinion. Everybody here treated me as a guest of honor. And Lelace, the daughter of Sithis, chose me to be her consort. She told me that she'd give me the kiss of Sithis soon. Why would you ruin this for me? That is no concern... Wait. Did you say Lars Tull? Is that why the Dark Elf's here? I've seen her in his headquarters, oh dear. I may owe him some gold. I can't believe they sent Bastion after me, again. They treat me as if I were a wayward child. I am perfectly capable of managing my own affairs. I refuse to go. Claim me. I am not some sack of flour to be bargained over. Oh, very well. Bastion works for me, indirectly. I'll go with him. I can write a promissory note for the Dark Elf to deliver to her thug of a boss. He's a terrible person. Bastion doesn't seem very fond of Quisley. I can't imagine why. We compared notes while you were talking with that simpering idiot. Bastion said he might have an idea that would solve things for both of us. Years ago, I lost everything trying to get my brother out of a fishy trading scheme. Lars Tull offered to help me. I'm still paying for it. It would be grand to be done with Lars Tull and to pull one over him at the same time. If Bastion's willing to work with me, and perhaps forget about the knocked out and tied up business, I think we might have room for a compromise. Once we get Quisley out of here, I'm done. I've paid my debt to his family three times over. All right, I think I know how to sort this out. If Tanare is prepared to listen, that is, I'm willing to overlook the knock on the head to settle this. First, we need to get Quisley out of Blackwood. Tanare doesn't have anything personal against him. Well, no more than anyone else who meets him. But the criminals she'd bring Quisley to might kill him. I'll threaten to tell his parents about this whole affair unless he cooperates and goes straight back to Daggerfall. Quisley knows that Lord Silvel can cut him off. It's the only threat that actually scares him. He would have to earn a living. I think we can all walk away from this. We ship Quisley home, secretly. Then we make sure that Tanare has something she can take back to Lars Tull. Thank you, friend. I think Lord Silvel would agree that you've earned your payment. What do you think, Tanare? Are you willing to give it a try? I'll need to bring Lars Tull proof of Quisley's demise. What kind of proof would you need? I'm clearly not dead! 
If I bring Quisley's signet ring to Lars Tull, he'll believe me. That's what I was thinking. I'll tell the Silvels that Quisley sold the ring to pay his debt. I'm right here! That ring should work. It might even cover most of Quisley's debt. What? My ring? I'm not giving you a damn thing. Bastion, keep that woman away from me! Ah. Here you go. I'll make sure Quisley understands to stay away from Blackwood. Thank you. This should clear my account with Lars Tull. And perhaps clear yours with this ingrate and his family too. We should leave this place. I'll see Quisley on his way when he comes around. Something you need to discuss?
Deadlands are no place for a mortal flea. of our fair city, Keshu. I demand you deal with the criminal post-haste. Your guards did their job, Counselor Vandacia. The prisoner is secure. And what's this? More assassins? Explain yourself immediately. One attempt on my life today is more than enough. If you're another one of those Dark Brotherhood bastards, I assure you, you won't find either myself or Governor Keshu to be easy prey.
Warn me? As always, Leviticus offers too little and too late. I received the letter, same as the other counselors. My personal guard took the threat seriously, and we captured the assassin in the act. But what of my esteemed colleagues? Are they safe? Dead. All three of them. This is unimaginable. Feral Lupus's letter suggested the Longhouse Emperor's left behind a secret that would prove to be a threat. But I thought he was just being melodramatic. Has Leviticus determined what this is about? Four ambitions? Never heard of them. How could something I know nothing about make me a target of the Dark Brotherhood? It's got to be a mistake. You must question the prisoner. Get him to confess and reveal the truth of this sordid affair. Governor Keshu locked the prisoner in a holding cell in the courthouse basement. Question the villain and find out why the Dark Brotherhood is trying to wipe out anyone who was part of the Imperial Elder Council. I'll head for Leowin afterward. I wish there was something I could tell you. The letter I received suggested that some old council business was the cause of all this. Why the Dark Brotherhood would be interested in such menial affairs, I'm not sure. I'm completely baffled. As I said, I never heard the term. The Longhouse Emperors were enamored of secrets and code words, though. Perhaps I encountered it, but it was called something else. If you think it might be important, ask the assassin when you interrogate him. I'm not sure how relevant my ancient history is, but I was appointed to the Elder Council by Emperor Durkarach himself. I helped guide the Empire through most of the reign of the Longhouse Emperors. Governor Keshu locked the prisoner in a holding cell in the courthouse basement. Question the villain, and find out why the Dark Brotherhood is trying to wipe out anyone who was part of the Imperial Elder Council. I'll head for Leowin afterward. I wish there was something I could tell you. The letter I received suggested... Keshu the Black Finn. War hero, progressive Argonian, and governor of our fair city of Gideon. I serve as an advisor and bureaucrat. Nothing more. I have deep roots in Gideon, so I try to do my part to keep the wheels of government turning. My personal guard is dedicated and well-trained. Not to mention lucky. I was nearing the courthouse when the assassins sprang from the shadows. My guards reacted instantly and overpowered the villain. We brought them here and Keshu locked them away. Why is this the first I am hearing of a threat against the former members of the Elder Council? I should have been alerted to this the moment it came to light. The Chamber of Legates and the Ivory Brigade are usually quicker to share information. A prudent precaution. Leowin Castle can be better defended than anything we have here in Gideon. Still, without accurate intelligence, my Blackfin Legion is like the Watchmen patrolling at night without a lantern. Enthusiastic, but ineffective. I am Keshu, called the Blackfin. The people of Gideon elected me as their governor. It is my honor to serve them. Prior to this, I traveled the world as a mercenary and helped establish the Ebonheart Pact. I even fought in the war for a time. Not at all. 
I gave up my commission. I seek to build an advanced Saxlial society. A more inviting and vibrant culture that embraces our past glory while retaining our current outlook on the world. Gideon is the beginning of that experiment. I learned the benefits of an integrated society during my travels. Gideon is open to anyone who wants to live in peace and contribute to my dream. All are welcome here. Someday Gideon will serve as the gateway to Black Marsh. My dream is that Gideon will one day connect all of the isolated Argonian settlements with a larger world. A center of learning, diplomacy, and culture. We have a long way to go and many hurdles to overcome, but we will get there, eventually. The Legion I commanded, both when I was a mercenary and when I fought for the Ebonheart Pact. When I retired, a contingent of my soldiers came with me. Now they protect Gideon from bandits, hostile Argonian tribes, and other threats. I only locked the prisoner in the cell a few moments ago. I was trying to get more details out of Councillor Vondacia when you entered the courthouse. Since you're working for Captain Rianne, I will allow you to interrogate the prisoner. Not much. Vondacia and his guards brought him in. It was unusual, though. The man was calm, confident, completely at ease. Not a hint of worry or concern. Like the rabbit that knows it is faster than the wolf. I suggest you be careful with that one. The cell door is open. What happened here? Put something on the lock. Hit me. And escaped. Some sort of acid ate right through the lock. Look, there's more of it on the floor. Almost knocked me over. How rude. He attacked this legionnaire and ran into the ruins of the old city.
Do you make it a habit to read other people's mail? That letter is personal and private, full of sensitive information. Well, aren't you a fast reader? If you chased after me because of something Council Van Dacia told you, well, he lied. If the Dark Brotherhood sets out to kill you, you're dead. We don't make mistakes. We don't fail. Not ever. I haven't killed anyone. Not recently, anyway. And if you're talking about our calling card, anyone can dip their palm in black ink and slap it on a sheet of parchment. Look, we receive no contracts. I'm here on different business entirely. Good question. If you figure it out, let me know. I certainly owe someone for the bruises the Counselor's guards gave me. Now, as much fun as this has been, I really do need to get back to my daring escape. Best of luck with your mystery. Tempting, but no. I detest so-called places of justice. Again? So, the mercenary from Leowin has returned. Tell me, were you able to capture the assassin? Or perhaps you killed him in battle once you caught up to him. I am eager to hear the news. Allow me to peruse the document, if you will. <laughs> Proof positive that the Dark Brotherhood is in Blackwood. We must find this sanctuary and destroy it. What did you expect? Such lies fall from his lips like rain from the sky on a stormy day. Villains never freely admit their guilt. The evidence is right here in this letter. Meet me and Leowin and we'll share this information with Leviticus. What? Oh, my personal guard are nearby and these legionnaires are sufficient. You need not be concerned. As for Keshu, she had business to attend to. Gideon business. I saw no reason to distract her from her regular duties. Now to Leowin.
What? I treat my mounts well. You should do the same, or you may find your life shortened by a great deal. The guild has need of you, comrade. Dark Brotherhood. They must be driven out of Blackwood. I still can't figure out why they would be targeting us, Vandasia. Eliminate the threat first. Then we can seek answers. All of the remaining counselors in Blackwood are gathered here in the castle. Valeria, Vandasia, and myself. While we await the arrival of the scribe I sent for, tell me what you uncovered in Gideon. I'm not sure I agree with Vandasia's assessment. Yes, I remember reports of their presence early in Morikar's reign, but they were driven out. The assassins must see this as the perfect opportunity to reclaim their base, but what does that have to do with Leovic's secret and the ambitions? Vandasia, Faleri, and I were just discussing that. We think Leovic had each of the counselors unknowingly working on a different aspect of the Ambitions project. They each had access to a piece of the puzzle, but no one but Leovic knew everything. That's our prevailing theory. If the counselors ever came together to compare notes, the truth of the Ambitions would be revealed. To stop that from happening, the Dark Brotherhood was sent to kill my colleagues. Indeed. Hmm, very curious. Still, I'm hesitant to take the word of an admitted killer at face value. Not with so much at stake. Regardless, their very presence still poses a threat to all of Blackwood. The Sanctuary cannot be allowed to reopen. Jirix and Sophus's documents contain information written in Imperial Code. 
I sent for the scribe Baragon, but he has yet to arrive. Until then, the counselors will remain safe within these walls. You have done well so far, and have my thanks. Whatever the truth behind the murders of my fellow counselors, we can't allow the Dark Brotherhood to gain a foothold in Blackwood. I'd like you and Evely to go to Blood Run Cave to ascertain the situation there. Talk to Evely and make your plans. Until we know more, I'm not prepared to engage in an all-out war with the Dark Brotherhood. No, better to send you and Evely to investigate the situation. Then we can determine if a more forceful response is warranted. Hey, partner! Over here! All right, you heard Leviticus. Time to get back to work. While the counselors stay safe in Leowin Castle and wait for the scribe to arrive, we need to find out what the Dark Brotherhood is actually up to. Show me that letter you found in Gideon. Yeah, these are definitely orders. It mentions Blood Run Cave. That's northeast of Leowin, toward the edge of Blackwood Territory. Well, as the spinners always say, the best way to find out what's happening in the clearing is to step into it. Of course it does. Nothing has been easy since I found that strange book and started chasing down Leovic's secret. Well, are you still interested in solving the mystery of the ambition? Will you come with me to Blood Run Cave? The counselor should be safe, so meet me at Blood Run Cave. We need to determine if the Dark Brotherhood is behind the murders or not. Either way, that sanctuary is a threat to Blackwood. I just hope I don't have another one of those waking visions. Remember back at Fort Blueblood when we found the murdered servant? I had a vision of a shadowy figure. It was a robed and hooded cultist. Order of the Waking Flame, I think. It was brief and powerful, over in a moment, but the figure felt... evil. What else could it be? The book seems very old, and it's written in a language we can't read. Just carrying it around, it feels heavy, oppressive, like a burden I didn't know I had. But Lupus sent me to find it. It must be important. I don't know. I'm an archer, not a Daedric scholar or anything. I don't think I should let the Order of the Waking Flame get their hands on it, though. And maybe one of these visions, if I have any more, will actually help us figure this all out. No, but that last vision I had was clearly a warning about the cult leader, whoever they are. They're powerful and evil. So, bad dreams or no bad dreams, I think I'll hang on to the book, just in case. I'll meet you at Blood Run Cave. You made the right call, Leviticus. We won't be safe until the Dark Brotherhood is driven out of Blackwood. Blood Run Cave is a dangerous place, whether the Dark Brotherhood is present or not. You and Everly should be on your guard at all times. Watch out for each other. I would hate to lose operatives as valuable as you two have been. Everly brought word of a threat against the former members of the Imperial Elder Council, including Counselor Leviticus. The threat seems to be related to a secret of the Longhouse Emperors, a secret concerning something called the Four Ambitions. We don't actually know. We sent for an Imperial scribe to decipher the coded documents you found, but they have yet to arrive. In the meantime, we've been doing everything we can to protect the counselors from Dark Brotherhood assassins. Leviticus, Valeria, and Vandacia are safely ensconced in Leowen Castle. Unfortunately, we couldn't save Jiric, Sophus, and Abor. 
You found the Dark Brotherhood's calling card at every scene. Yet the assassin you met claims they killed no one. Assassins are not the most reliable source of truth. Still, that's part of what we're sending you to their sanctuary to determine. Good luck, mercenary. We're all counting on you. What do you say we try some of the here. local fare? Rock Grove begs for your aid. I open my claws in humility, wanderer. Please, stay to hear my story. Have you heard of the Sulzon tribe? Vicious and unrelenting, they wander through the swamps, attacking any they find. Now, they've fallen upon my home in Rock Grove. A horde of those impure Limphins raided the old city and seized the Zanmir. They captured so many of my kin, or returned them to darkness. Their purpose hides from us. But our stone talker claims he recognized their leader, Basse. With a stiff tail and bared abdomen, I beg for your aid. Please, gather a force of your strongest allies. Travel to Rock Grove and drive out the Sulzan. Defend what is left of my tribe, and they will surely reward you. My gratitude fills every pond in the marshes. Perhaps with your aid, what remains of my home can be salvaged. Rock Grove lies southeast of here, or you may take my cart. Speak to Immaka when you arrive. She can offer you the necessary guidance. We heard rumors of Sulzan crawling through the marsh, but thought perhaps they might spare us. Foolish. The attack was swift and ruthless. Our warriors held them off, while some escaped and rallied at the city entrance. Their goals hide among the worms they call friends. I know little of Sulzan desires, and had hoped never to learn. Stories drift to me about brutal sacrifices, bloodshed for the glory of chaos. But who can know the truth? Ah, perhaps you have not traveled that far south. The old city is a sight to behold. The finest mud puddles in this region and the stonework amazes any who visit. Most of us live in a village just outside, so that we can keep an eye on the Zanmir.
It stands upon large vents of scalding steam that occasionally burst into large geysers. It's a rare occurrence, but they can threaten the structures of the Zanmir. Some of us work to keep it intact when an eruption damages the stone. One of our village guards, though now she may be our sole remaining defender, she protected us as we ran from the initial attack. After we found safe haven, she sent me to call for aid. Dust on scales, the sinew and veins of our tribe. He serves as conduit between the Hist and Rock Grove Zonmir. He knows a great deal about the old city's secrets. You should seek out his guidance. Councillor Girik was assassinated, right under the nose of the Brigadines. I heard Captain Rianne is at his wit's end. Even hired mercenaries. So much for the Ivory Brigade. What about the other former councillors? Do you think they're all in danger? Who can say? But if the Dark Brotherhood is involved, what good are Brigadines or mercenaries? Like you had a rough expedition, friend. But we in the Undaunted don't sign up to sit on cushions and drink mead, do we? Mordra can answer that better, and probably more to the point than I can. Basically, we're adventurers. We simply must do something about the business, brother. These chambers are much too small for our lifestyle. I realize that, Scipio, but the Pancros have us by the throat. What am I to do? Inside the walls, I draw the bread. Facing two armies, he deals out dead. With only four... You have a look about you. Some sort of quality that's rare to find. 
Excellent. Hope the room is... Nope, just make it... Oh, what a... Well, now, Scipion can say what he wants about this city, but you don't have strapping, smoldering-eyed strangers walk into your suites in Chain and all. Alas, were I only in the mood for some distraction? Damnable fang furls. With the Empire gone, the fang furls gang controls all trade in Blackwood. They're run by pungent adder. Every fifth coin in the region ends up in his coffers. This makes business difficult for my brother and I. Perhaps we could enlist your help? If we had one of their business ledgers, I'd have an understanding of the Fang Furl's operations. Perhaps even find a weakness ripe for exploiting. If you could procure one of those ledgers for us, my brother and I would pay you handsomely. If you get us a ledger, I'm certain we can put it to good use. Rumor has it the Fang Furls have a bookkeeper, Lerar Droth, who lives in town. I'd wager you could find a ledger in his home. It's just around the corner, across from the bridge. I know his name is Lerar Droth, but the Fang Furls make him lead a quiet life to conceal his identity, I imagine. With all the muscle on their payroll, visits him for late-night liaisons. Very clandestine, the whole thing. But not to my keen eyes. You can learn a great deal from a business ledger. Where money comes from, where it goes. And then all you need to do is apply a little pressure at a weak point. I don't know exactly what we'll find, but I do know whatever it is. I can exploit it. The Happy Averno Shipping Company was gifted to my brother and I by our dear departed uncle. Formerly, it was one of Blackwood's main trade enterprises. We thought with a little elbow grease, it might prove a profitable venture. We discovered our uncle's affairs were more... precariously poised than described, for one. Many of his charters and contracts were voided by the Three Banners War. The Fang Furls did the rest. They came for everything they could steal. Councillor Durek was assassinated, right under the nose of the Brigadines. I heard Captain Brienne is at his wit's end. Even hired mercenaries. So much for the Ivory Brigade. What about the other former councillors? Do you think they're all in danger? Who can say? But if the Dark Brotherhood is involved, what good are Brigadines or mercenaries? I don't suppose you have anything to cook.
can't wait to take a load off at the inn. Councillor Jurek was assassinated. I saw some rather unsavory ruffians skulking about. Fang pearls, I'm sure. Oh, they wouldn't dare approach us directly. We're safe enough, Julius. All the same, I'd rather you not venture outside without me, brother. Good ships along, may you and Quay await the morning tide. The Fangfurls continue to sniff around our skirts. If we don't move quickly, there won't be a happy Averno shipping company left to save. Did you find the ledger my brother asked about? I'd like a look. Julius has no head for sums. Let's see. Ah, it seems the Fangfurls have their thumbs in some very dirty pies. I'm not one to talk, given where my hands have been. I have an idea. If we can draw out Pungent Adder himself, we can topple him and his gang. By gifting Pungent Adder some umbrage, looking at this ledger, I see two morsels dangling before us. Firstly, according to this, the Fangfurls use dead drops to issue and receive orders. If we steal those drops, we disrupt their operation. We sent Pungent Adder a more personal message. It seems he has a barrel of Oleander Coast Reserve waiting at the docks. Let's say we season it with something foul. Make it as pungent as the Adder himself? While you sabotage the dead drops and taint his wine, Julius and I will write a signed letter to make his blood boil. Then it's just a matter of combing the stinking depths of Leowen until we find someone that can put the letter in his hands. Hang on to them, I suppose. They might be useful to peruse after all is said and done. Find out who's worth trusting and who's happily squirming in bed with Adder. Uh, the cask is at the docks, so I'm sure there will be something on hand. Pitch, bilge water, fish, anything will do. Just try not to get caught doing anything unseemly in public, hmm? No sense mixing business with pleasure. Councillor Jurek was assassinated, right under the nose of the Brigadines. I heard Captain Brienne is at his wit's end. He even hired mercenaries to his gang. So much for the Ivy Brigade. But the other former councillor... What do you want?
Some people don't like the bustle of cities, but I come from a big family, so it reminds me of home. What do you say we try some of the local fare? I'm famished. <laughs> 